Hello everyone and welcome to a test of the RP2000 career mode in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. This is the first test that I'm going to be doing after telling everybody how to install it. Uh, it is still very early days. The purpose of this test is going to be finding out what is wrong with the RP2000 career mode and fixing it. Uh, so yeah, it is still version 0.0.2 .0 at this point. Uh, the link on GitHub says proceed with caution. And I've already updated it since I made the video on how to install it. And the update was to add full compatibility for FASA, EDB Real Rockets. And in addition to those two mods, it is fully compatible with Raider Nix mods, Real Engines, and the ATK Propulsion Pack. In general, I've prioritized engines. So a lot of other packs, the engines will already be configured, but not some of the other parts. So... Uh, that is ongoing work, and but in this install that I uh, introduced you to in the installing RP2000 video, we don't have those additional part packs. All this has in it is uh, realism overhaul and its requirements, community tech tree, custom barn kit, contract configurator, procedural parts, procedural fairings, my small rockets pack, and the sheer strut engine pack, and some vid visual mods. So exactly as installed in the video on installing RP2000, except that uh, RP2000 itself, I've got the updated version in here. And also there's an updated version of small rockets. It's 0.8.3 now, and that added a whip antenna that was necessary for communications early on in the tech tree. And we'll see that in a moment. But let's start a new career mode. So I'll say career test. And I'll say hard, but that depends on your experience with these sorts of things. And of course, requires signal for control. We're just using the stock comms here. The goal of RP2000 is be, to be as close to the stock career as possible, given that it is realism overhaul. So we'll just uh, go with those. I will say always allow action groups because uh, when working with the CubeSats, it's really hard to right click all the science. So we pretty much need to use action group for those. All right, I'll just keep it to the regular flag. So as sort of a tutorial thing, I'll explain some of the parts that come with the small rockets pack and the shear strut engine pack as we go along. So you know what you're getting there. So this click through blocker, I'll go with follows mouse, I think, I don't know. Um, choose a preset for Kerbal Construction Time, uh, RP2000. Uh, somebody had asked about simulations. I'll have to, I think that's a separate mod. And so I'll have to add that in the mod that does simulations because it used to be bundled with Kerbal Construction Time, but it doesn't seem to be right now. At least I didn't notice that. And we'll put the normal upgrade points in. I normally do about that. Okay. All right. So we are on the right date. We should pick up the regular contracts, namely first flight, and send the payload into space. Okay. Now the tech tree uh, looks like this again. And again, we have relatively few parts. And some of them. Uh, some of the slots are dominated by the stock part still. I'll try and make some other stuff. Not in aerodynamics, though. My main concern is pods. Because, first of all, in you know, with the year 2000 and all, we don't normally send people alone in space anymore. So the Mark I pod isn't so useful. So we need some simple pods here. And better command modules and heavier command modules here. So I'll look into that. But we are still early on here. Okay, so we have a few choices for core. There's the Air B sounding rocket telemetry unit that's uh, just part of realism overhaul. There's, these are functionally equivalent, these two. And um, then there's the CubeSat command core, the payload adapter. Payload adapter is a little bit heavy. And uh, if you want to really use it, you'll need tweak scale. I mean, it'll still work of course, but you'll need a fairly large tank to make it work. And that's a one meter tank. Oh, sorry, it's a 0.8 meter tank. 
So we're talking about a fairly large rocket already, unless you have tweak scale for that. Tweak scale is optional. You can, of course, use it. It'll just scale the pricing. Uh, so my general idea is to use the sounding rocket core. And built in is a control unit and two battery units. The batteries are not very powerful. They're 160 electric charge. And in general, there should be a tag that says part placed in price by RP2000. But I've noticed that some things with real plume sort of block that. Basically, it has a part configured for real plume. And then that when it says that, well, here it says it's just fine. But some parts are configured for RP2000, even though they don't have that. So I don't understand. But anyway, we've got this core, but we would like to put some science in. And so we've got the barometer, thermometer, accelerometer. And as somebody noted that it's really hard to get on the node that you want here. Yes, it is. <laughs> I uh, So normally I just use the the move tool and shift it if it's not in the right position. And in general, uh, we can try and get to the one. Uh, you can sort of vaguely, I've zoomed in as much as I can. Oh, that's zooming out. Dip, dip, dip. That's as much as I can zoom. You can sort of see it there moving from one node to another, but it's hard with these CubeSat units. And I'm going to put a whole lot more battery power in. Well, maybe I shouldn't spend so much on that. By the way, these batteries and these components were all actually on the web for the CubeSats. So I found real pricing for the reaction wheels. That's $8,000. All the prices are basically in thousands of dollars, roughly current. Uh, so that's $8,000, $15,000, $10,000, etc. So, yep. Uh, and these are model rocket motors that were actually for sale, though you would need a pretty good certification to use it. And then this engine was on eBay. <laughs> it was It's a leftover surface-to-air missile engine, actually. Uh, it was for $7,900, and it has these stats, roughly speaking. So, yep, you could buy it off the shelf. Uh, I don't know how well that eBay engine would work, actually in practice. I don't recommend actually trying to buy it and use it, but anyway, it was there. So, yep, that's what the start level is all about. The start level is all about these off-the-shelf things. So I got some more battery units just in case we need to transmit, and we've got the action groups so that we can action group these. Uh, the parts on top of the platform don't have colliders, so you can't really click on them. Uh, the platform that they're attached to is what you can click on. So log temperature, log gravity data, and log pressure. Now, if you didn't get the update to the small rockets pack, you will have a communication problem. So, and that's because, well, I had a communication problem. So I developed this part. This is based on Sputnik's antennas. And so we've got this whip antenna that will help early on. And the sort of logical way to put it is well, unfortunately, it's facing the wrong way there. Sort of like that, maybe extend it out depending on your preference, but it's fine. Okay, and those won't break off in the atmosphere. There are these relay antennas and helix antennas. Um, those are, I might want to turn those down a little bit. They're really powerful, but anyway. Yep, it's not really clear what range they ought to have. And we've seen CubeSats go out to Mars, so it's a little bit complicated. The, this the Marco CubeSat that went out to Mars. So we are with these rock, uh, model rocket motors and the S2720. If you put in Raider Nick's US rockets pack, you might have some Airbnb stuff here. And there are actually, these are Airbnb stuff. And these aren't labeled that they're configured for RP2000, but they are. So, yep, those are all ready to go. Um, I don't know, I'm a little bit suspicious of these, actually. Those seem about right. The pricing of these, I don't know. Okay, but my usual thing is, I like this M3400, and that's because the ISP is pretty good. 
you can cluster a whole bunch of these and see if you can do something really spectacular with them. I'm not going to be too ambitious. So coupling, we've got the procedural decoupler. That's why procedural parts is important because otherwise we're not going to have enough to work with. Probably I don't need a cone, but uh, O8000. The O25000 lasts a very short amount of time, but provides quite a bit of thrust for a model rocket engine, 29.3 kilonewtons. Uh, so that's a lot of thrust weight ratio if you need a booster like that, but that lasts about a second. Uh, but this one, uh, 10 kilonewtons, lasts about eight seconds. So Delta V stats, Oh, let's have long stats. Thrust weight ratio high as you might expect. We don't really have enough delta V to get into space right now. We could do a cluster of 08000s, but I found that, you know, that doesn't look that good. So, so we're going to use these procedural tanks. Now, there's the new type ones, which are these, like the integral structure and all, and then the old type ones. I don't know about the pricing of the new type ones. Um, I assume everything is consistent, but let's see. Uh, so if I take that off, it seems like two units for this. All other tanks are basically priced with the procedural parts in mind. So if they seem a little bit cheap to you, it is because procedural parts are cheap. And well, this one is even cheaper than that one though. Yeah, so I'll ponder that. We'll, we'll use this integral structure one in the hope that it's a little bit more reasonable. The fuels themselves seem a bit cheap as was noted during a live stream. So, but that's built into community uh, community resource pack and real fuels. So I don't know if RP0 slash one actually changed the pricing of those, but I don't know then why the original price was wrong in the first place if that they were gonna do that. They should just have the right price so there is a size limitation, so we can't make, well, that that's normal for a procedural decoupler, but is there a size? Nope, decouplers can be made as big as possible. Let's check if the tank can be made as big as possible. I think there should be a limit. Nope, limit's not working. Um, definitely not working. So I'll have to see about that. But since you have limited engines anyway, it's sort of sort of academic. I mean, you could try something really crazy with like a hundred of these S2720 engines at the bottom. The more interesting concern is the SRBs because this, yeah, you can make a really super duper SRB. But in that case, there is still the constraint of price. You wouldn't be able to afford it. And the pad wouldn't be able to launch it so but I would like to fix that I've tried I actually set the limits for the tanks it just doesn't seem to catch so I'll have to figure out why but like I said there are other practical limitation uh, practical limiting limiting factors ensuring that you're not gonna go crazy with these things so this engine requires a high pressure tank. See, so it needs high pressure tank pressure fed. So uh, depending on which tank you use, this is done two different ways. So these tanks up here operate one way. And then this tank, the one that says tank first instead of procedural, operates a different way. These have uh, dash HP for the high pressure ones. So whichever one has dash HP on it, that's the high pressure type. For the other type of tank, this one, normally we go with the service module tank, and that's the high pressure tank. So that's the way it's done there. But we'll go with, uh, let's just say, a regular aluminum high pressure tank. And we're going to fill it with the appropriate propellants for this engine. Here it now says feed pressure OK because of that. Not all engines have uh, pr uh, pressure feeding. They generally have turbo pumps, but this is a relatively simple engine, and so it is pressure fed. We have a very high thrust weight ratio off the pad, uh, so we'll make this a little bit longer so it doesn't stress things out and break apart, because at 
at the end it's going to have a thrust weight ratio of 21 right now. So maybe I'll make this decoupler a little bit wider. We can stop it short. So we got these launch stability enhancers per usual, but I was thinking of making a smaller one for this, but the whether we need to or not, I don't know. So checking staging, we've got that one. We need this decoupler here, and we want to do those immediately. This is being kept simple, 145, basically $145,000 is the idea. This is probably overdoing it, but um, yeah, let's see what happens. So now it's on the build list for Kerbal Construction Time. Kerbal Construction Time is optional for RP2000, that's up to you. Okay, Thrall Up SAS doesn't exist, and I don't have fins on. We'll see how bad an idea that is. The This engine does have gimbling though, but we don't have SAS, so good luck. Ignition, and launch. We just want to go straight up anyway. I didn't do pad science or anything like that. We'll, we got the contract complete for first flight. Oh god, it's gone all haywire. Yeah, we'll need fins. Uh, hold on, let me see if I can use its gimbling. Okay, manual control. Uh, uh, no, no. No, come on. You are not a surface-to-air missile. We are definitely not a surface-to-ground missile. Stop. Stop! Go up, please. Go up. Go up. Go up. Mm, maybe we should just give up on this. All right, all right. Uh, let's get the science though. So number one, gravity scan can't be done. It's in the atmosphere. Transmit. This was a very scientific launch. So yeah, I'm not using Catan Escape Canaveral or anything. I'm not even using the highest possible textures for real solar system. Okay. Back to the VAB. So we've got the basic fin and the procedural nose cone for you to use. I'll probably move these launch clamps up a bit so that these fins can be close to bomb as possible. We don't need them. Oh, we don't have tweak scale, so they're gonna be this size. I should probably put tweak scale in. Uh, we'll see how far I can get without it. I think it'll be all right. Very tiny bit of tilt, hopefully. Those fins are expensive without tweak scale, though. Oh, I guess we can get started on the next level of science, because that's actually going to take some time. We'll get basic rocketry unlock, and that's going to take 165 days anyway. We Let's see, we got one upgrade point available, we'll just toss that in. We don't have enough funds for buying upgrade points right now. Okay, Thrall Up, SAS doesn't exist, right? Ignition. And launch. And it is beginning its stabilizing roll. And we are through the worst of the dynamic pressure. Definitely a space apoapsis now. Honestly, the SRBs are only there to weigh down this thing. Okay, let's do upper atmosphere science. Atmospheric scan. Okay, now we can do a gravity scan, but hold on. I'm worried about that we don't have enough electric charge, so we'll wait on that. For some reason, these take a trivial amount. Kerbalism is a whole other thing that I'll think about later. Okay, and then the gravity scan. Uh, nope. Ah, I need to reach in this one. Yes, log gravity data. Sure. Okay, transmit. Oh, it's not too bad. It's uploading fine. I think it's only when I'm using the relay antenna. That takes a lot of power. I'll have to consider about that.
Okay, we got all that science. Let's try and fire the SRBs. So, close the hatch. Well, not that make a difference, but... And... fire. We're not gonna get to high over the Earth, because in real solar system, that's 35,000 kilometers. So this isn't gonna make it. But that's how the little SRBs work. Payload was sent into space. Yep. Uh, somebody asked about the structure of RP-2000, so maybe I'll just quickly go into the files I primarily manage. There's the contract files, but uh, the, mainly what I've done is the part placement files and the part pricing. Uh, the part placement files all basically look like this. They are in little blocks and they address the part name in the configuration. They specify uh, tech that's required, the reentry, uh, the entry cost, the reentry cost, the entry cost, the unit cost, and then the little thing that says that it's been placed and priced by RP2000. And so there's this file called part tree placements that is sort of catch all for a whole bunch of mods. And then for mods to have a lot of parts, like my own EDB mods, uh, so this is the one for that. And some of them I haven't finished pricing, so they'll have the price commented out because I haven't gotten a price for that. Like, what I, what would the price for the XB70 Valkyrie parts be? I haven't figured that out yet. So, but the parts that are more pressing, like for the real rocket spec I've done, so there's the parts for Launcher 1 there. And uh, we've got the Vulcan parts here. And so from the... Real Rockets Pack, those have been priced. Starship is here. Um, so this is the Sure Strut Engine Pack one. This is the FASA one. Uh, these parts I just couldn't find. I didn't know where the heck they were. So yeah, but uh, practically everything else has been done for FASA. These are Raider Nix parts. Um, some of them don't have an entry cost because they're open at start. So those are the Araby ones. And there's the KK launcher pack I haven't finished yet. Uh, the Sobol S SLS mod I haven't really... Uh, I've placed them in the correct technologies but I haven't priced them yet. There's a procedural parts patch. And this is what I was talking about. I did try and set limits for the procedural parts. Like this is the balloon tank that Realism Overhaul added. And this is the integral structure tank that Realism Overhaul added. But for some reason, that's not these tech limits aren't catching, uh, or are are not being obeyed. So uh, I'll have to think about why that is. There's a contract thing. Now I told it that the Sun stationary name is Helio stationary instead of uh, using like um, Kerbal stationary, I suppose, or anything like that. The geosynchronous, you know, of course we have to change it back to geosynchronous and all that business. Or Colnia has to be Molnia. So that's what that's trying to do. Whether that's successful or not, I haven't seen yet. Those are the basic ideas. And then the contracts are as formatted by contract configurators. So that's a contract configurator format for those contracts. Fairly self-explanatory. But most of what I've done is these part pricing and placing stuff. Except, of course, making mods, which I have also done. All right, so we completed those contracts. We should go to... Now we've got all those tourism contracts that pop up at this point, but we don't even have a cabin. Uh, we just need our first satellite. We get a pretty hefty advance for that. We now have investors. You know how that is. Angel investors from Silicon Valley or something. Uh, failure cost is quite substantial. I might want to rethink that. This, these contracts, all of these contracts were originally from RP0. And some of their life, but of course, if you can't get to orbit in like however many years that is, six years, hmm, <laughs> what can we say? So we have some more science. We might as well queue the unlock here for Engineering 101. And we can't afford general... Actually, I want survivability for the heat shields anyway, so let's go down this way. Okay, so those are unlocking, and that should give us some more upgrade points. So I'll add those points there. We can afford some more. Let's get some more. Speed up the science a bit. Okay, so orbital rocket. 
Now, we don't have the stuff in basic rocketry yet, which would be helpful. And it's... Even though we got a lot of Delta V from this, it's not super easy to squeeze out an orbital rocket with this surface-to-air missile engine. It's actually uh, not a ridiculous engine, though, uh, for space purposes, because the engine on, say, the Vostok service module is not very different from this, actually. So, a very similar fuel mixture. The AK-20 in Tonka is basically what was in the Vostok service module. Okay, but if we want to go to orbit, we'll we'll just keep this idea. But we'll need a few another stage of the 08000s, I think. Let's see. They are the surface attaches on the top node for these. Which is good, but we'll need a decoupler at the bottom. And I probably shouldn't have put those yet. It would be good to have sort of an RCS system for this. To spin it up before we release them, but we don't have RC. Well, we have this. No, we don't. Oh, yeah, we do have the CubeSat RCS, but that's really, really weak and has a very, very tiny tank. Um, what's the actual thrust of it? 0 0.001. One Newton? One Newton. We could add additional nitrogen, though. I don't know how effective that will be. I mean, this, I don't even know where to put it, so. I think the best thing to do is to take advantage of this reaction wheel, which is a little, well, everything is a little bit cheaty, but uh, it's a bit cheaty because technically you'd need three. It, uh, the reaction wheels only operate on one axis, but I decided, and I could have separated it out into like a pitch, yaw, and roll reaction wheel, but how how painful would that be? So, and I got it on the wrong node, so I'm going to just shift it down like this. So we have a reaction wheel, and we'll try to use that to spin up prior to the... I toned down the reaction wheel, I think, I hope, the, compared to what it was in my live streams. So that's not going to be enough for orbit at all. We're going to need a larger tank. We're going to have a lot of those S2 engines. We could wait until we get basic rocketry, then we'll have halfway decent engines, though. I'm still just getting 8,400 meters per second, and I don't think that's going to be enough. This is a 15-ton rocket already. Now, if we wanted an SAS unit, I think the best, uh, the only thing is the payload adapter. The unit is built into it. That's what those little black boxes are. Oh, I, uh, actually, there's a star tracker, isn't there? Yeah, oh, we could add the star tracker. Though, the idea that that's an SAS unit is a little bit of a stretch, but... I wanted a star tracker having a purpose. Technically, that's pointed the wrong way, but I, I'm not going to turn it. What would it do for us if we change this to a aluminum lithium high pressure tank instead? Nine thousand. I think that could do it. I think that could do it. There, there is also the cheaty thing where. You put a high pressure tank at the bottom that the engines are attached to and then still keep the rest of the tanks not high pressure and that'll make them lighter. But I won't do such things. We could make this longer, but I think with the thrust to weight ratio, maybe we'll be all right. Call this beta, we'll see. It's not too expensive. Only 14 days to build, too. Okay, well, we don't have to wait for anything else. SAS, we have SAS. Um, we could also use MechJeb's Smart ASS. And of course, uh, it's optional, but you can use KOS, and maybe I should do that just for the heck of it. But uh, for, for now, we'll do this because I did not think about that. <laughs> so, okay, um, that, that all seems to be all right. We have to make good use of the high thrust to weight ratio of this if we want to get into orbit with just 9,000 meters per second. So let's see. 
ignition and launch. All right, off we go. I know about Mech Jam Ascent Guidance, so I never use it though. Now we don't have fins, so we have to be a little bit careful here. There's no throttling on these engines. Oh. It's a weird effect there with scatterer, I think. Okay, we need to flatten out pretty decisively here. Hopefully you can take that. I think I want to decouple without lighting those, uh, lighting that stage, so. Alright. So, uh, because I want to use the reaction wheel, I want to decouple like this. And... Hopefully, we've got reaction wheel control here. Well, we seem to be able to roll. The reaction wheel is actually weaker given the power that it draws and its mass than the ones that are already included in the real solar system, but... Still super effective. Okay, well, so with persistent rotation we can time warp during this phase. Still got a spin. Now, worried about comms, we've got Bermuda happening, or I assume that's Bermuda. How many islands in the middle of the Atlantic can there be? Okay, approaching Apoapsis, we're a little bit off, but let's try it. Oh, I guess we can... Eh, we'll just say we spin stabilized. Ignition. And ignition. Oh, looking pretty good. And ignition. Ah! Uh, we didn't quite make it. If we were pointed directly at prograde, we probably would have. I could have done that with the reaction wheel, but I, I decided not to be that cheaty. Okay, well, so we didn't quite make the orbit contract yet, but this thing was close. Let's see if we can transmit signs from a different biome at least. These uh, WISP antennas or WIP antennas uh, just mimic the surface mount Commutron 16s right now in terms of their capabilities. Okay, tropics transmit. Okay, um, that temperature scan and pressure scan are not surface biome dependent. Let's see if we can do another one. Water. Oh, we hadn't done water before. Wow. Okay, I think that'll do it for me for this mission and for this video. I think that's uh, that's a start. We'll try and make orbit again. I'll have to think about whether I want to time warp to the unlocking of basic rocketry or not. Or whether we should try this rocket again, maybe with a few tweaks. So I'll think about that. But there we go. The first attempt at this new version of RP2000. With that... I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.